Good afternoon, everybody. Colin here with TechOut. Very exciting video. I just wrapped up my live stream installing the beta on all my devices. And this is my iPhone 15 Pro Max here running iOS 18 Beta 1. And as you can see, things are looking a little bit different. Um, we have some themed icons here, or some dark icons rather. Um, right now, this is only, of course, working on the first party icons because the beta just came out. Um, so I'm assuming, uh, well, at least based on what Apple says, developers will be able to change their icons as well to have dark theming. And the options we have right now are um, pretty cool. So if you hit add it up here, you can still add your widgets, but we now have a customized option, which will bring up this menu down here. So you can do automatic, which will, you know, just go based on whether or not you have dark mode on or not. You can do light icons, which are your basic standard icons. You can do dark, or you can theme the icons based on your wallpaper color. And it will automatically select a um, automatically select a theme based on your wallpaper right here. Um, and then once you're done, you just do that. And as you can see, that does theme all your icons, whether they are first party or not. Um, so that is working with third party icons right now. It looks kind of cool depending on your wallpaper. It kind of makes everything just the same color. Um, so that's pretty neat, but I do really like these dark icons and I'm very excited for, um, for, uh, third party icons to be able to support that as well. Um, I really like the home, the, um, the messages and the phone app icon. It looks really, really nice. Um, all those Apple app icons, just very nice in dark mode. Uh, you can also increase the icon size. Um, so that's what they look like in large right there. Doing that, uh, there is one trade off. Um, you still get all your icons, your all, all your rows, um, but you do lose the uh, labels under them. So there's no way to turn that on or off. Um, you do lose the labels when you make them large icons. Um, one of the biggest features in iOS uh, 18 is being able to place stuff wherever you want on the home screen. So as you can see here, I have a gap right here. One thing I have noticed though is you can't like, uh, I already had this set up on 17, but like if I try to move this down here, it still tries to fill in that row, which is kind of weird because um, it doesn't make you do that. Like if you create a page, I don't believe. Um, so not too sure what is up with that, um, but we'll figure that out and see what's, what's going on there. I don't know if that's just a bug or whatnot, but like over here I can put, you know, if I want to have that down there and that up there in the middle of nowhere, I can do that. So I'm not too sure, um, not too sure why that is happening, but I'm still playing around with the home screen and stuff like that. Um, as you can see, I kind of got it all a little, a little jacked up here, but, um, all my stuff's getting moved around and stuff like that, but I'm going to play around with that later on and kind of customize things for the new home screen because, uh, you know, back before you had to have everything in the same spot and in a row and all that kind of stuff. So I'll play around with that and we'll we'll get that set up here and everything. But very, very nice. Um, another big feature everybody's looking forward to is the new control center. So here it is right here. I have played around with this a little bit. Um, so you can now rearrange things. Um, you can rearrange anything. Um, so you can resize stuff. I want to make this bigger. Um, I can, you can see we have silent mode there. It's, you can have a little dot or a bigger bar. Um, you can resize this. You can also have, so this is the favorites tab right here. I have favorites, home, and then this is like the cellular kind of uh, connections tab with airplane mode, airdrop, Wi-Fi, you know, all that kind of stuff. And if I want to delete this, I can. Um, you can't resize this because it's the only one there. But if I want to delete that, I can. You can also, um, add, I believe, yep, so you can add another one right here. So if I wanna add a control, I can add a now playing widget. Um, you can also search for them. So I can add now playing, I can make it its own thing. And as you can see here, it makes it, um, makes it its own little tab over here. I don't know if you can reorganize. I don't think you can reorganize them. Uh, as far as I know, I haven't figured out how to do that. It doesn't seem to want to move those. But the now playing used to be up there when I when I had it. But I don't really use that, so you can delete those. If I delete this right here, it'll delete that from there. So now I just have home and favorites, but I can still get to all that cellular stuff right there. So you really don't need two of those, but you can customize that to your liking, however you see fit. Um, another thing you can do is now when you create a wallpaper, um, when you're customizing that, you can also customize your toggles down here. So 
if I wanna get rid of that, I can. And you can do choose from all these things. Um, these are all control center toggles. You can also do this with third-party apps when that starts rolling out. So uh, third-party app developers will also be able to integrate stuff into um, into third-party apps. Like they're supposed to be one for like Snapchat. You can access your Snapchat camera and stuff like that. None of the third-party apps are showing up on here yet, obviously because the beta just came out. Um, one cool one I wanted to use was open a open an app. Uh, but that one is bugged out right now. As you can see, it adds it down there, but it doesn't let me select at what app I want to open. Uh, so that shortcut is not working. So I just have it set to home and um, home and flashlight. So now if I tap the home icon, there you go. We can unlock the device, unlock the device, and it goes right into the home app. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, I really wanted to put messages down there because I figured that would be, you know, if I want to reply to a message real quick, just tap right there. I don't have to go in and, and tap the icon. It would all be right there. Uh, you can now require face ID for apps. So you just tap this right there. Um, other third-party apps, you can hide them, um, which will put them in a hidden folder. Um, so like if I want to require face ID for Chrome, oh, okay, I don't know why it doesn't work for Chrome. Um, let's see. We'll do YouTube Studio here. So I can hit require face ID and I can hide it. And it'll tell you what it does. It obscures it on the app icon uh, name, app icon and name, and it uh, turns off app notifications and calls. So there's no icon there anymore, as you can see. If we go over here to the folder, you can see there is a hidden folder down here, which you can't see any apps in it. But if I tap it, then boom, there is your YouTube Studio. Don't require face ID, authenticate, and you can get rid of that. Um, and you do have to put it back. So let me put that back real quick and show you the other option that we have. Get that back over there. Um, so the other option is just requiring face ID normally, which keeps your icon there. Which keeps your icon there, but when you go to open the app, oh, okay, hold on, let's see. I don't want the app to open. Don't want the app to open. Okay, so you can see Face ID required to open YouTube Studio and then you can't see anything in the app. Uh, when you have that on, also it does hide notification previews as well. Um, so you won't get notification previews from hidden apps. Um, so that is pretty cool. Uh, we were hearing about a big settings redesign, um, but it doesn't appear that we really got anything. They did change some things up. Um, this looks a little bit different up top here. Um, and now when you scroll down, you don't have all those apps that you just have to keep scrolling endlessly and endlessly if you have a bunch of apps. Um, so that is now in its own section that is in alphabetical order and you have a nice search bar up there for all the app settings and stuff like that. Um, so that's pretty cool. I think the search setting is new. Um, it looks like whatever that is is kind of glitched out. Some of them don't have names on them, but whatever. Uh, battery, uh, they did move that to the top now. So all your like device stuff is right up here. And then you know everything else is kind of just back where it was. Uh, the new Siri is not implemented yet. Uh, we do have to wait for the new Siri and the AI stuff. Um, so that is unfortunately not in beta one. Um, that is coming later in the summer. And I think the AI stuff is coming later in the fall. So that cool thing with the new Siri animation that they showed um, is not working yet, um, unfortunately. Uh, like I said, and then here on the iPhone um, SE2, we do have iOS 18 on here as well. Um, so this is kind of what the default setup looks like. I think I need to add my Do Not Disturb tab back. I think that got deleted. Uh, or my Focus tab. Nope, it's up on the top there. I'm just blind. Um, so that's what that looks like. Uh, you don't obviously have the uh, same home screen options. You don't have the stuff on there. Oh, I thought the I thought iOS 15 or iOS 18 got rid of the battery. Not recognized since I changed the battery in here, but it just came back. So rip on that, I guess. Um, but if we go down here to wallpaper, a little bit more sluggish on uh, the SE2, obviously it's an order device, but you can't customize those buttons down there. You don't have those on uh, home button devices. You only have that on uh, the gesture devices. Everything's been running pretty smoothly here on the 15 Pro Max. I haven't had any issues really, other than those few glitches and those couple things not working uh, with the shortcuts in um, the control center and the control center on the home screen. But uh, too early to judge battery life because like I said, I just installed this. It's only been a few minutes. Um, so we're still waiting on that. But I will let you guys know how that is. But that's just the main new features here on iOS uh, 18. Uh, one other thing we do have is the satellite messaging. So if we pop into our 
little cellular stuff here. Uh, satellite is not available as you can see, but if you hit try demo, um, you can try a connection. Uh, it also explains other stuff you can do. You can update FiMi with satellite, which you've been able to do. All these three things down here, you've been able to do in iOS 17. But now you can send messages with cellular via iMessage and SMS. Um, it does appear to be working, but you have to, uh, it's not something you can just turn on and choose to use satellite. You do have to legit be out of cell coverage and out of Wi-Fi coverage. Um, if you do try to connect to the satellite when you open messages, it will uh, briefly say on the bottom that it's sending via satellite, but then it will re-enable the cellular and uh, turn that back off because it knows there's cellular available. If we hop into uh, messages really quick, um, we do have the new uh, send later feature. So you can type in message um, and then you can select what time you want it to send. So that is all there and working as well as the new message effects. Uh, so like you can do like explode and set, you know, what words you want to do that and all that kind of stuff per like per word and all that kind of cool stuff. So that is iOS 18. Like I said, I'm Colin with Tech Out. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. And as always, have a great day and we will have more coverage on iOS 18 as we find more features and as new betas get released. Thanks for watching.